Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. A couple of years ago, my son in Idaho obtained some Russian olive. I hadn't turned it before, so I brought it home and promptly rough turned a bowl, waxed it, put it away in a paper bag, and didn't worry about it for the next couple of years. Probably the best thing to do when you're drying a bowl. So now it's time to finish that bowl. It lost only 22% of its weight in the drying process, which makes it one of the drier woods to start with. Then, just by the way, finished turning, this is only 15% of its dry weight. The rest of the wood was wasted away. That Russian olive turns out to be interesting. It is a quite a hard wood in the lighter areas and actually a fairly soft wood in the darker sapwood areas, which gives it a little bit of a wave so if you're one of those that likes a perfectly smooth finish with a high shine, probably not the wood for you, but I think it looks nice, and I'll make that a feature of this bowl. Maybe next time I'll even sandblast it or something to emphasize it a little bit more. But for now, let's remount and finish turn this Russian olive bowl. Back when I rough turned this bowl, I did not leave the center mark on the base of the bowl. I prefer to remount the bowl using the old center mark against a chuck or faceplate. Since I don't have it, I'll use my homemade coal jaws to mount the bowl. Since I'm going this way, the only thing I'll do is to recut the tenon. With the coal jaws posts, that's all I feel safe doing. Otherwise, I could have formed the entire outside. I'll use my skew as a scraper to form the dovetail tenon. Now with the bowl reversed, I'll start the exterior first. The downside is that I have to work between the bowl and the headstock. At first, I'm focusing on getting the bowl round again. Then I can focus on shape. I have plenty, probably too much, wall thickness to work with. Using my large bowl gouge, I'm using a combination of pull cuts and shear scraping. One feature I want on this bowl is a slightly flared rim. This gives a feeling of security when lifting a bowl that hands will not slip beyond the rim. Now for the interior. I'm first using my bowl gouge to remove the remaining wood. The wood is much harder now that it's dry. This makes me glad I roughed this bowl while green. As the bowl walls become thinner, it's getting harder to get a good cut going since the walls are so much more flexible now. Finally, I'm switching to a large bowl bottom scraper for the fine tuning. Now I'll power sand both the interior and exterior. At this point, the bowl is sanded and almost done, but there's still the foot and mounting tenon. It would be a shame to mess it up at this point. I've remounted the bowl back into the coal jaws. For a bit more security, I've remounted the tailstock, then carefully cut off the tenon and to form the foot, then sand the foot area. To this point, I've not applied any finish. Since I keep my walnut oil in a large Tupperware container, I'll give it a short soak to give the oil more penetration. Then I could get by wiping the oil onto the bowl. With glass marbles in the container, I'll scoop some into the bowl to weigh it down. After a short soak, followed by a drain time, I'll wipe it down. So, after two years in the making, I have a beautiful bowl and a much more beautiful bowl than I expected when looking at the raw chunk of wood. The grain is wide and sweeping across the bottom and side. Sanding resulted in a wavy feel that accentuates the grain pattern. I may accent it even more next time. That's all for now, until next week, for another project. Please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Do yourself a favor and always wear your face shield.
goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.